Hey, it's Chase from On The Table Gaming, and today we're gonna look inside the A Song of Ice and Fire Miniatures game, Free Folk Starter Set. <laughs> All right, so I'm super excited to open up the long-awaited Free Folk starter set for A Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures game. And I have a confession, uh, I have already opened this box. As soon as it arrived, I pulled it open and I just had to look inside and I laid all the miniatures out and, and examined them. So we're gonna be going through a symbolic unboxing here of the Free Folk set. So now, just like in your typical starter set, you're gonna come with all the tokens and scenery pieces you need to play a full game. So you can see we've got the spike barricades and palisades. So you can see the thematic style they're approaching this with. It has the free folk style walling, there are wooden palisades with some shields and some torches burning. Um, really great job with this. Uh, and so once again, you've got your weirwood trees and your corpse piles on the other side and your free folk range ruler and more corpse piles. I'm predicting a lot of corpse piles are going to be used with my free folk army uh, on something like Feast for Crows. They're going to be getting obliterated. Uh, now I really like the, the Song of Ice and Fire rule book here. The cover art, it looks like they're actually at a hard home and um, this has your standard rule, still beautiful art inside, going over what miniatures are involved. The giants, you can see a sneak picture there. We got the spear wives, and I've got a set of those as well that Simon Games was generously, uh, generously sent to me. So I'll do an unboxing of those later. All right. Your standard tactics board, and it would be kind of cool in the future to see some updated versions of these. Uh, there is now being offered from Rebel Lightworks a on-the-table gaming tactics board that you can upgrade yours to, and all proceeds from that go to helping our channel and helping us with our podcasting fees. We've got our free folk dice. So you can kind of see the uh, little giant with a club there. That's the free folk symbol. Those are your sixes. You've got your D3, of course, that comes in the packaging. We've got all our cards, and you'll notice that these cards are coming out of the packaging because I've already opened them up. We've got the no coin behind the wall. Free folk armies may never include neutral attachments or units. Your craster, ally of convenience. Of course, everybody's favorite, Mance Raider. And of course, Lady Val, the Wildling Princess, not making an appearance in the Game of Thrones TV series. And your raid, your raid leaders, tactics cards. Uh, Tormund, who I accidentally shuffled somewhere into my deck because of course, when I got the game, of course, I had to look at Tormund Giants Bane. Uh, I'll be running a lot of him. And then all your tactics cards, your uh, mission cards, objective cards, um, there's a ton of additional content that comes just in the, the paperweight of itself of this game. We've got our unit cards, our free folk trappers, of course. What everybody wants to see, the giants, these savage giants. I don't know if we're going to have a different type of giant. Maybe the civilized giants, I don't know. The free folk raiders, and these units you field in pairs of two with their gang up ability. This unit's melee attacks gain plus one to hit when attacking an enemy engaged with another friendly unit. You've got your objective tokens. Nobody's really excited about the objective tokens. They're the same objective tokens you've got in every set. So I didn't even open mine here. And then, oh boy, here we go. What you really wanted to see, the actual miniatures that come with the Free Folk starter set. So without further ado, let's open up and see what we've got. Okay, so starting with the giants, let's get in with the fun stuff right off the bat here. And I'm gonna put something behind them so you can see a little bit better. Here's your first giant, this giant club. He's got like a buckler tied to his leg. Really cool miniature. Um, some pretty hairy shoulders, which is pretty good because uh, not, not wearing a t-shirt, it's gonna be cold for him. So a little bit of frostbite maybe when you're painting him in there. Um, but I bet you get pretty sweaty when you're giant fighting in combat. Too much information about giant physiology there. 
Another giant just taking like a leisurely stroll with his uh, tree branch here. Um, also, shirtless, going to be freezing. A free folk trapper, and this is one of three sculpts that they have. One with a spear, and then one with a bow. We've got some of our NCUs. We've also got an NCU here in Craster, the ally of convenience. He can also be fielded in the Night's Watch army, but right now at least, only available in the Free Folk Starter Set. So if you play Night's Watch, you're going to want to be looking for someone who buys two Free Folk Starter Sets to really build up their forces and maybe trade them for one of their extras. Tormund, drawing his sword, a great action pose. This is going to be a fun miniature to paint. Lady Val, our wildling princess. And, of course, the man of the hour, the Tower of Power, Mance Raider, with his fancy helmet there, pointing his sword, all dramatic. Uh, his rally ability, he already looks kind of inspiring. I think it's going to fit his unit ability. All right, and let's take a look at some of the other more spammier units here. So this whole tray is just Free Folk Raiders. It's two units, and these are three-point units, so it's really... Think of it like one big six-point unit. And so you're going to have a lot of fun painting <laughs> these miniatures. So let's start off with the unique guy here, the Raid Leader. Raid Leader, dual-wielding stone axes. And the unit they'll be leading has a, an assortment of weapons. So stone axes and flails, another stone axe and a flail, and then finally double stone axes. Once again, you get a tremendous amount of value with this set, and I'm so excited to start painting them up. Now that I've got the set in hand and I can look at the miniatures, um, really, Simon Games is, is continuing to put out exceptional miniatures at this price point, and uh, the Free Folk are no exception. The, the Giants are going to be so much fun to paint, and it's cool to have another sort of monster solo unit on the board. Now, if you're just getting started with a Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures game, it's important to note that each house has its own style of play, and the Free Folk style is a swarm army. So when you buy the starter set, although you can comfortably play a game at 30 points and using some inefficient choices, 35, uh, you're probably going to want to buy an additional unit like the, the Free Folk Spearwives to play at the full 40 point range. Now this is true of every starter set. They let you play comfortably at 30 points, the smallest level of gameplay, and you can usually make some inefficient choices to then bump those points up further. But in the Free Folk Army, you really feel it because they are a swarm army, and so their units by nature are typically cheaper. And when you put a lot more of their NCUs on the side, um, it really has an effect on their combat abilities. So uh, if you're getting into the game for the first time and you're looking at all different houses, make sure you recognize that this is an additional investment. You're going to be buying more units because that's the nature of these forces. You're going to be ganging up, surrounding, and engulfing your opponents. I absolutely recommend picking up the Free Folk Starter Set, and although I do recommend picking up a unit like the Free Folk Spearwives to go along with it for maximum fun, um, you can have a blast just with the basic starter set as well. So I hope you pick up your Free Folk. Let me know what sort of list you're running in the comments below, and I hope you get your miniatures on the table.